Star Wars Squadrons is a beautiful game, but the cockpits are easily the best part. For the first time in a long time, I am in love with something in a Star Wars game. Squadrons is a 5v5 space combat sim, and it's first person only. That means that unless you're watching a cutscene in the game's story mode, or you're customizing your ship or pilot avatar in the menus, you're going to be looking at the cockpit of one of eight unique fighters. Every single one of them looks different, and the amount of detail in each instrument panel, and even the window you're looking through as you skim along the surface of a Star Destroyer, really sells the feel of classic original trilogy Star Wars. I had a great time studying each cockpit and messing around with the customization options that Star Wars Squadrons offers with a bunch of unlockable trinkets, so I'm going to break down my observations as we pick apart each ship. Now, before getting super detailed, let's take a high-level look at the different styles of the Empire's fighters and the New Republics. Both feel really faithful to how they were depicted in the movies, even when they're adding in details that weren't really there on the screen. The Imperial ships have a very cold, precise aesthetic with blue and red screens for their displays. It really reminds me of some of the little glimpses of the technology that we get in the Death Star and on Star Destroyers. The targeting screen in the center especially feels like a very close replica of Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, which you see in the original Death Star Trench Run. Three of the TIE Fighters have that classic octagonal window. The only exception is the support ship, the TIE Reaper, which has a rectangular window that's more like uh, an Imperial shuttle. The New Republic ships look even more retro than the Imperial ships, with warmer yellow and green colors for some of their displays. Their cockpits are defined by triangular lines and shapes, while the instrument panels like the radar and the shield indicator are more often circles. While the Imperial ships are cool and packed with just as much detail, I gotta say I especially love the New Republic ships because they feel like movie props come to life. I can imagine the Lucasfilm designers embellishing a command console with tons of little blinking circular lights and switches that didn't actually do anything, but they evoked the idea that you were looking at a real cockpit. But in Squadrons, all those instruments actually work. You saved my life. So every fighter in Squadrons has its instruments laid out differently, but they all share the same capabilities with a couple small exceptions. So here we're looking at the A-Wing cockpit. On the left is the radar display, which shows where other ships are around you. To the right of it is your target display, which shows you the types of ship you're locked onto, its distance, and its hull and shield integrity. Beneath that, on the main instrument panel, from left to right, you have your throttle gauge, system power management, secondary weapon ammo, and shield status. The throttle for each ship has uh, some kind of mark at the halfway point to remind you that that's the ideal speed for making turns. Throttle up or back to 50% before turning, and your ship will take a sharper cut. The number here does represent your speed, and depending on the ship you're flying and how much power you've put to engines, you'll see a different top speed. There's also another bar around the edge that fills up when you divert power to engines. This is the boost meter. Trigger a boost to get a huge burst of speed at the expense of losing a lot of control. The whole dial will actually change color when you do a boost. The power system lets you shunt energy to engines to increase your top speed, weapons to increase damage and laser recharge speed, or shields to increase your shield recovery. Now, by default, you can use a single button press to max out one of the three power systems, but there's also an option to control this tick by tick and get really granular with your power management, so those individual dots aren't just for show. Enemy missile. The weapons display includes an icon for your left and right auxiliary weapons and your countermeasure, which helps throw off a lock on missile. The dial below each symbol changes color when it's refilling to indicate a cooldown. Look above these icons and you'll also see 10 red lights, which show how much charge your laser cannons have before they overheat. Finally, there's the shield indicator, which shows your hull strength, the number, and not just how much power your shields have, but also where they've taken damage. Rear and front shields are each represented by a half circle, and you can tap or hold a button to redistribute your shield power to the front, back, or evenly split it. The smaller circle to the right and the arrow under your hull strength shows where you've prioritized shields, while the green light in the top right corner will actually flick on when you've diverted extra power to shields. Along with the power system, I think managing the shields when someone's on your tail or you're flying headfirst into a capital ship really helps sell the fantasy of piloting a complex starfighter. Kind of the visual design of the Imperial ships is 
different, of course, but they offer the same functionality, except only the TIE Reaper has shields. So that panel is missing on the other three. I love that as detailed as these instrument panels are, there are other little touches in each cockpit that differentiate them and are just there for personality. There's a complex mess of thick cables behind the instrument panel of the TIE Bomber, and its displays for like targeting and radar are inverted irregular octagons, while the classic TIE Fighter uses upright versions of those same panels. And then the faster, more angular TIE Interceptor has more triangular panels that fit its more aggressive style. As expected, Titan V. There are other details that I didn't really pick up on while I was playing, but I began to notice them as I scrutinized my video. I love how the TIE Interceptor, your four laser cannons actually extend into view in front of your cockpit and you can watch them fire. And as your ship takes damage, cracks will appear in the glass in front of you. The speed lines that they show you when you're boosting really do a good job of conveying how fast you're moving. And there's more detail to add once you customize your ship. Just miss me. Ship customization in squadrons includes a lot of unlockable components, like different laser cannons and shields and missiles, as well as decals and paint jobs. But I'm going to focus in on the customization for your cockpit. There are three things you can change here. One is your hologram, which is the form that your fleet commander takes when they're giving you orders to attack the enemy ship or retreat and defend your own. There are some really fun ones for the New Republic ships, including a Dejeric piece. That's the hollow chess game that Chewbacca is a big fan of and the monkey lizard, which is Jabba's very Muppet-like pet. Second is the dashboard figure you can add, which is either a stationary little toy like a Luke Skywalker figurine or a bobblehead. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to choose anything other than the Ewok bobblehead for the New Republic, and honestly, it's hard to beat the Vader statue with glowing red eyes for the Imperial ships. Finally, there's the hanging flare, which is a little keychain ornament like a mini Millennium Falcon or a Stormtrooper helmet or some flowers if you want to keep your cockpit fresh. Squadrons doesn't have any microtransactions, so these are all unlocked with in-game credit you'll earn just by playing. The developers also confirmed that what I saw in this demo isn't the complete selection of decorative items that will be in the final game. Overall, I think there's a really fun amount of detail in the cockpits in Star Wars Squadrons. Every ship feels distinct, they feel super authentic to the original movies, and I think looking around them in VR, which Squadrons will support when it launches, will make them that much more immersive. There's even an option to turn off the HUD elements that appear on your screen, showing you warnings like a missile lock on or telling you what direction attacks are coming from, so you can totally fly by the instruments in your cockpit. For a beginner, I found the radar a bit too small uh, and really hard to parse, but if you can master that, you'll be an ace pilot in no time. Check out PCGamer.com for more on Star Wars Squadrons, including another video that breaks down the game's showcase multiplayer mode, Fleet Battles.